You want that perfectly fitted 3D helmet and you may have seen others using a 3D scan of their actual head, but you like me and you don't have a 3D scanner. Well, I've been testing out a new method to scale your 3D printed cosplay helmets without the need for a 3D scanner. So it's time to embrace your nerd. Hi, Tracy here from Astrocyte Cosplay. In the previous video I did on scaling helmets and armor, I went over some beginner tips such as cosplay calipers, how to measure and how to do test rings. But I've been testing out a new method using a head model, not a head scan as I don't have a 3D scanner, that actually I printed this bo helmet using this new method. And I'm hoping that this might actually save you some time so you don't have to measure every single helmet that you want to print. So as I mentioned, I do not have a 3D scan of my actual head as we don't have a 3D scanner, but I just jumped over to Thingiverse and did a search for human head, trying to find a model of a human head that we can use in another program later. Now it doesn't really matter which one you use, you just need a basic human head model. So this one here looked pretty good. So we're just gonna go to that and download the file. And then you're just gonna save that where you need to save it and you know where to get it from later. So from here, I just did some measurements of both mine and Scott's heads using some cosplay calipers, just to get our measurements from front to back, top to bottom and ear to ear. And then I just took note of those measurements so that we can reference these back later when we're sizing our head. Now we need to resize that head model. Now you can do this in any program that you're comfortable with measuring models in. Now I'm doing it in Mesh Mixer here. You can do it in Cura, any other program that you're comfortable measuring in. So we just need to bring in the head scan that we downloaded earlier. We need to resize this to my head size in this case. So we're just going to go edit, transform. Now here you've got your X, Y, and Z, and you'll have this uniform scaling. It may be on or off, but make sure it is ticked off because we do not want uniform scaling. So using the measurements that I took with the Colorspace calipers earlier, we're just going to change these to this reference. So 160 by 230 by 230. 160. and accept, so I'll just pan out a little bit. So now we have a head model that's going to be relatively similar to my size head. Obviously the proportions aren't going to be the same, but it's still gonna give us a pretty good guide of where the back and the front and the ears and that will fall. Now that this head scan is the right dimensions for me and you wanna use it with other helmets down the track, we can actually export this. So if we just go export and we go head, Tracy, and you can save it where you want to. And that way you've always got that sizing reference for later. Now that we've got our head model correctly sized, we just want to bring in the helmet that we want to try and scale to our head. Now it will come up with this append. So we want to append because we want both the head model and the helmet to be brought into the one file. Now this may take a while, so just be patient. Okay, so I'm going to show you on this bo helmet that's from Mystery Makers. I will link that up in the description below if you want to check out this file for yourself. But we're just going to have to move it around. So we're going to go to Edit, Transform. Now we have all these options here to move it back and forth and to rotate it. So this is just taking, it will take a little bit just to get it sitting over our head and into the right position. So you wanna to get to a point that we don't have any clipping so that it's not like you're not coming out the back of the helmet or the front of the helmet and we're getting a good idea of where your head's sitting in that. So <laughs> I'm still All right, so we're in a pretty good position here. Now you'll see that it's going pretty close on the nose here, but my head's not really coming out the back at the moment. When you rotate around the bottom, you can get a bit of an idea of where you're sitting inside the helmet. Now you can see that um, I knew that I'm going to have a lot of uh, room around the ears and that, but I'll just put in some foam and to pad that out because at the end of the day, I need this part, my nose, 
to fit in and not be sticking out the front of the visor. This is at 100% and it was actually the size that I needed to print it at. But if this is not the correct size, you've got a couple of options here. Now with the helmet, we do want uniform scaling because the proportions will start to look a little bit wacky if we scale it not in the same um, dimensions each way. So you've got a couple of options here. So say you need it to be smaller, you can go 0.9 and that'll actually do 90% of the helmet and then you can move it around and play around that you need or if you need it bigger say we go 1.1 and that's going to give you 110% so you'll get the idea you just need to play around until you get the size that you think is going to be the size you need and then once you're happy with that sizing we're going to go accept and then you'll want to export this using the export button again and just putting bow helmet. And that's what you're going to save out to import into your slicing software. Now, with when you're sizing your helmets, you do have to remember that it isn't just about it actually fitting your head once you've got it on. You do need to get it over your head. So it's not an issue with this Bokatan helmet because it is a bucket. So it has a nice wide open bottom. But if you had another helmet that had a smaller bottom, for example, this Captain Marvel helmet. So we would do something similar here. But you you can see here that you've got to get that, like that's obviously not, like it might fit there at this point. So that looks pretty good there, fits all in. However, it's going through my head here. So if I was to print this helmet, I'm going to have to chop off this jaw section before I can print it and print it in two parts because that, this bottom section is never going to get over my head as one whole piece. Anyway, that's just something to keep in mind with when you're doing helmets. Just be mindful of the bottom gap as well and not just the actual size of the helmet. Now, before you commit to a 3D print, you may actually want to still do some test rings just to make sure that that sizing is right because I'm definitely most worried about the nose and the back of the head in this case. So if we were going to do that, we go to edit, plain cut, now you can move this up and down to where you might like to do your plain cut. Now, given that the nose is the issue, I would probably do it around here. Now we want to keep, go slice, keep both and remeshed infill is fine. And then we're going to do that again, going to plain cut, but this time we're going to move it up a little bit higher probably just above that visor section. Just doing the same, going accept. Okay, and then we go separate shells. So now you'll see here that you have a whole heap of sections. Now, in this case, this is probably the one that we would like. Normally I do I do it a little bit thinner, but given that the way that the visor sits and we need it to be one piece when we print it, that's the section that we're going to have to do and do a little bit more. Now, the great thing with Mystery Makers is that he actually builds in these wire frames into his models because he is just that good. And he does this for you. So you can actually print all the sections he's already cut it out for you to be able to test out your prints. So definitely handy for Mystery Makers when he does this for you already and you don't even have to do the plain cut. After printing this helmet, you can see that it fits perfectly. Now there is some room in the sides that I did know when I was printing it, but it needed to be this side so that my nose would actually fit in. I'm going to add some foam and some padding on the inside so that it is nice and snug anyway. The beauty of this method is next time I want to print a helmet, I already have the models of mine and Scott head sizes. So I just chuck them into the program and size up the helmet based on that. I then don't have to do multiple measurements all the time to get that perfect fit. As with any method, there is always some trial and error. So you just need to find which method works best for you. There are plenty of different methods for sizing your helmets and armor. Maybe something else works better for you. So make sure you check out this video for some other tips on how to get that right fit.